Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. And, um, and because of so much abuse of, of this topic of praying in the spirit, this wasn't something that man came up with. This is God's divine plan for every single one of us. So today, whether you're someone that already prays in the spirit or someone who has never done that before, because we are talking about 50 shades of prayer, God has given us a language of prayer. And that language of prayer is praying in the spirit. That's one of the other languages. We pray in our native language, and then we pray in our spiritual language. And God wants to activate that spiritual language in us. Now, the other reason I want to talk about this subject is because so many times you have Christians that do believe in praying in the spirit, but don't understand why they pray in the spirit. And if someone were to ask them, why do you pray in the spirit? They can't give them a clear answer. They see things like, well, uh, I pray in the spirit because I'm a spirit filled church. And or, hey, I'm a uh, uh, I pray in the spirit because our denomination is Pentecostal. Let me just be clear with you today, okay? And I'm going to show you through scripture. There is no such thing as a Pentecostal church. That does not exist. That is man's label. Just like there's no such thing as a charismatic church. That's another label. And so what happens with us as society or Christian or believers, we're constantly boxing ourselves with labels. And God said, create for me a holy nation. And we created denominations. And now we're all divided. So we have to bring understanding back through scripture and, and really start uh, being in the order of God when he says, I've given you my Holy Spirit. And with his Holy Spirit, he gives us gifts. And if you don't want spiritual gifts, something's wrong with you. There's a challenge if you don't want spiritual gifts. I mean, this Christian walk can get so mundane and boring. That's why people often change churches so much. Because after a while, they're looking for the next best thing. And I get it. Human nature is we want a church that's thriving. We should have that. We want a church that's winning souls. That should happen. We want a church that's, that's engaging but also hopefully challenging us. You know, we want a church that confronts our maybe our ideologies or our made up theologies that we've come up with. But what the, but the truth is, this is that God wants to speak to his church. God wants to revive his church by his Holy Spirit. We will not have another revival on this earth until every single one of us come to the conclusion and the truth and the reality that God wants us all to live a spirit filled life. We're not Pentecostals. We're not charismatic. And I get it. Even us as non-denominational churches or people, we can also, without even knowing or thinking of it, we can also kind of downplay all the other denominations because they're not spirit-filled. This isn't about who's better. This is about who's coming to the complete truth. And it's the truth, what Jesus said, that will make you and me free. It's about truth. It's about freedom. It's about understanding God. And I get it because when I first got saved, I remember, um, I, first of all, I was an atheist. Then I went into a non-denominational church that believed in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But when, but when coming to church and, and first, firsthand hearing about, not even hearing, seeing a move of the Spirit um, in churches that I would visit, it got freaky weird. It did. Like, I would hear comments like this. Now, please note, note this real quick. I'm not against of a move of God. I know when something is a move of God because I have the discernment to know what's a move of God. But I also know when there's just a flesh move. Because think about it. You are spirit, soul, and body. The problem we have is that we pray too much in the soul. We have too many soulish ways. We have too many soulish attitudes. And, of course, this body, well, we're always taking care of this body. And the body is the flesh. And the flesh does not want us to draw closer to the spirit. That's how the Bible says that, that the, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is what? Weak. Why? Because we live in the soul. Mind, will, emotions. And if you come to church, and if not careful, you can just sit here and just be a soul the rest of your life and not realize that God wants to elevate your life in the spirit. Yes? God wants to refresh his church. 
God wants to see the church be revived. God wants to see the church be revived and come alive and be awakened. And then all of a sudden, you start seeing miracles, signs, and wonders, and supernatural things will begin to take place. How about if you had a family member that was dying right now in the hospital? Maybe you do have someone like that. I have been in so many situations where there have been impossible situations, but because of God's spirit, but because of God's word, but because of God's move, man, I have seen people come out of comas. I've seen people come out of being brain dead and come back to life. I've seen people that were given six months to live still living six years later. How? The Holy Spirit. We got to, well, I don't want to be like, hey, man, I hope you feel better. No, no I want to be able to come and bring some, some truth. What does God say about your situation? Right? I mean, that we're spirit-filled. You can't say you have the Spirit of God. If you have Christ, you have God's Spirit. It's just dormant. And it's time to awaken. It's time to stir the gift within us. So, anyways, I've been to churches, and I would hear weird, hear weird things like this, and maybe you've heard them. I've heard, drink, drink, drink. The Spirit is your drink. And I'm thinking, drink, what the heck? What are we, what are we drinking? You know what I'm saying? And it's like, drink. It's here right now. And, you know, you start thinking, like, this, this is just weird. So, like, okay. I'll take it. You start thinking about maybe your past life. Like, man, if I had a tequila right now, I'd go for it. I'd take a, I'd take a shot. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, get, give me a glass of vodka. We'll hit, hit that thing. Or, you know, I'll just start seeing images of tecate, you know. And so you start thinking about your old life. Like, drink. And you, oh, I'll drink to that. And so it gets weird. And so I'm not against a move of the spirit. But I am against when something's not clear and we're not bringing spiritual understanding so that the unbeliever can understand what's taking place in the spirit and we can welcome those that are far away from God into the presence of God. Amen? That's what we want. It's the spirit-filled church, right? Not the weirdo, a little bit off, a little cray-cray. You know, no, we got to get back to God's word. What does the word say about speaking in tongues? All right, well, I'm glad you asked. Let's start with this. We're going to go to a book that you probably have never read before. It's probably really stuck on your Bible pages. Let's go to Zephaniah. Do you all of you know there was a Zephaniah? Thank you for that one truthful person. <clears throat> Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 9. Look at this. Are you there? Okay, look. For then, everybody say for then. Now, let me just be very clear. It says that in the last days I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, on my men servants, maid servants, women, men, children. I'll pour out my spirit on them. And they will dream dreams and have visions. And, and, and they'll lay hands on the sick. And miraculous things will happen. Well, this is the then that Zephaniah Old Testament was pointing to the New Testament. So the Holy Spirit has always been around since day one when God said, you know what? And God created the earth, and he said, let there be light. And the Bible says that the Holy Spirit was there, and the Holy Spirit hovered over something that was, that was void. But then because God spoke the words, the Holy Spirit brought those words of God into action. When you get the Holy Spirit alive in you, you are now activated as a believer of Jesus Christ to do greater works than these, is what Jesus said, right? So here he says, and so for then I will... Everybody say this word with me, restore. Okay, and I'm going to make a point here. For then I will restore to the peoples. No, it didn't say a people. Peoples. That means nations. Why? Because in every single nation, there's a language, right? So he says, I'm going to restore to the peoples a pure language. Everybody say pure language. Does anybody here have a pure language? I didn't think so. Yeah, let me see all my cussers in the house. If you cuss, just put your hands in there. No, yeah, it's not pure. We've Listen, we've all cursed at some point. Everyone in this room has cursed at least once. Or, or someone at least at some point in their life have cursed themselves. Have you ever said, man, I'm so stupid. Oh, you idiot. You should have turned left. You went right. You know, you've cursed yourself. Have you ever cursed a coworker? Cursed a boss? Now, you don't have to be cussing to curse someone. You can literally begin to think negatively about someone or say some, something so goofy and weird. See, our prayer life, have you noticed? When you pray in your natural language, have you ever prayed a soulless prayer? 
Like, God, remove my boss right now. Whatever you have to do, I don't care how you do it, just remove them. Just like you can, we pray prayers of whacking people sometimes. Just want to whack, just want to whack. You're like this, you know, this mobster, and we just want to pray wacky prayers. And, you know, whack that person and, and get that person out of my life. And just, Lord, I don't care how you do it, just do it. And, and just, we get soulish. And so God's saying, listen, God's saying, I'm ready to restore the pure language. Stay with me. Stay with me. That they all, ever say that they all, not some, and I'm going to listen today, that they all may call on the name of the Lord to serve him, to serve him in one accord. So a few points here. Number one, God wants to restore the language. What language? I'll get to that. It's a spirit language. Number one, he wants to restore the language that all, that everyone may call on the name of the Lord. Not just say, Jesus. See, when you receive Christ, you receive his spirit. But also to serve him. If you go to the book of Acts, it says, and when you receive my spirit, you shall be witnesses to me in all the earth. And so you can't even begin to think that I can serve God unless the Spirit of God has been activated in me. Because I, I don't want people to meet Mauricio. I want them to encounter God Almighty. Right? There's meeting you, and that's not too shabby. Right? Let's just be honest. Right? Me. Me, me is like, okay, that's Mauricio. But you meet God in Mauricio, that's something special. And so God's saying, I want you to serve me. I want you to be able to not only call on my name, but I want you to serve me because I've restored to you my spirit. Now, what does that mean, restore? Well, notice it didn't say, I'm going to give you a holy language. He said, I'm going to restore to you a holy language. That means that this language was already in existence, but somehow along the way we lost it in translation. So it's not he's going to give it to you. He's going to restore it to you. So the inside of you right now is a dormant, for those that don't pray in the spirit, there's a dormant language that God wants to unlock in these last days so that you can serve him and be a witness to Jesus, for Jesus. Amen? So let's take what was he restoring. Well, do you remember the story of the Babylonians? They were building a huge what? Tower. And so they were all speaking. They all spoke one language. Okay, they all spoke the same language. And so they were all in one accord. They were all in one place. And they said, you know what we're going to do? We're going to build something so big, man. We're going to make a name for ourselves. And so I don't know about you, but I want to build something great in my family. How about you? Come on, don't you want to build a great family? Don't you want to build great children? Don't you want to build a great career, a great calling, a great business? Do you want to build something like that? Well, these people were all in one accord, every single one. They all spoke the same language. You know, that says a lot about the church. What if the church all spoke the same language of faith? I wonder how many more miracles we would see in the body of Christ. If we all spoke faith, huh? If we all spoke belief, if we all spoke love, I wonder what would happen to this church if every single one of us spoke the same language of God. Man, I tell you, this world would probably come to Christ a lot faster than it is right now. We're divided in tongues because we're divided in beliefs. And so here you have the people, the Babylonians, and they started, you know what? We're going to build a tower so big, we want to reach the heavens. And they went out to work, and they started building this tower and building and building. And listen, they were building so incredibly amazing. Like God said from the beginning, I have made mankind in my image, and they're like me. And God literally saw his word being fulfilled at that very moment. That man was doing the things that God can do. Man was doing the impossible. And so God said, okay, you know, God has a rhythm. God has an order of things. And he came down and got the attention. Man got the attention of God. Think about that. When you pray in the spirit, you get the attention of God. When you pray in the language of you, you get the attention of you. Most often, <laughs> and so God sees what they did, and he said, well, look at that. Look at these guys. It's pretty amazing what they can do. And God said, this tells me that when they're in one accord and when they speak one language, 
Nothing is withheld from them. And so what did God do? He confused their language. So it was like me. I speak Spanish, and let's say, uh, um, let's see, someone. Sorry. <laughs> you know, my Indian friend here. You know, I started, you know, we, let's say we both spoke Spanish. Like, oh, my God, mira, que lindo va a ser la cosa, que padre, y todo. And then she starts speaking in Indian, and do you know anything in Indian? Anything? Namaste. Okay, namaste, or whatever. And, and we look at each other like, what? And the moment that God divided their language was the moment that they were all separated into all the world. So it was a part of God's plan. But God was obviously showing us that when you are all speaking the same language, when we are all in one accord, nothing will be impossible for us. And so when you read Zephaniah, Zephaniah said, I am restoring to you. I am restoring to my body. I am restoring to my church the pure language again. And that language is praying in the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, so I wanted to kind of give it to you in a different realm of understanding, but, but he wants to restore. And, and, when, we, and we pro, when we propose to do something as the body of Christ, when we propose to do something right here as a church, like when we say, hey, let's all come together and pray that this person would be set free from cancer, when we all speak the same language, when we all believe the same language, when we all start praying with this other language, shade of pray which is praying in the holy ghost let me tell you something when we propose to pray for something that's so radical like that god moves he moves but the challenge is is getting everybody on board even right now in this church and every church right here in santa clarita there are many divided mindsets there's many ideologies there's man theology and we're, we, we, we get confused. And so that's why this whole thing, this topic on speaking in tongues, it's so controversial. There's always debate concerning this. Think about it. How do you take something that's written by God in the Bible, by the Holy Spirit, right, that was inspired by the Holy Spirit, and man now on earth calls it demonic? How do you call praying in tongues demonic when God himself gave us the Bible, gave us the word, and said, my Holy Spirit, how do we call holy demonic? And we call demonic holy. That's the church today. And we kick against it. And the Holy Spirit is God's spirit. It's God himself living in us. It's, it's God himself coming in us, not only to save us from our sin, but it's God who breathes life in us. The Holy Spirit is our leader. He's our guide. He's our director. He's our helper. Jesus said, I no longer leave you orphans. I leave you another helper. And his name is Holy Spirit. And he's a person. He's a person. And he wants us to get to know him daily in our walk, daily in our living. And so uh, I, I just, I think that, that God's ready to, to, to get the church moving again where nothing will be impossible for us. Like Elevate Church, we need to do a new building soon. And in the natural mind, you're going to be like, oh, I don't know how we're going to do that. Well, of course you don't know, and I don't know how to do that, but God does. And so we need to get the wisdom of God. God, how are we going to do this? Because God wants to keep touching lives. It's amazing. You know what? Here's the problem. And I ain't hating, please. This is not trying to be negative. I'm just trying to make a point. We do Elevate Nights once a month. And Elevate Nights is rocking, man. That, this, this church gets packed, and people come because they know there's a move of the Holy Spirit. Well, is that the only day you have a move of the Holy Spirit? No, I move whenever the Spirit tells me to move. Okay, I'm not ashamed. Pray, preaching a message in tongues is not popular, especially in Santa Clarita. Um, so I'm not moving by man. I'm moving by God. And so Elevate Nights is a night where it's a free-for-all. I mean, we all study. We all prepare. Even our worship team, they'll, they'll rehearse and they'll get ready. We're all, our wells are filled. But when we show up on Elevate Nights, we don't know what's going to happen. We trust God's going to show up, obviously. We just don't know what we're going to do. All right, we don't know. And God shows up every single time in a supernatural way and lives are healed and lives are touched and people are restored. and peop I mean, amazing, miraculous things happen. What's interesting is that on Elevate Nights, we get a lot of denominational church people that come to Elevate Nights. It's amazing. And I love it. I love it. I love that there's other denominations that are coming here to see What's going on at Elevate Church? What is this Holy Spirit move? I love that. From every church, Grace Baptist, Real Life, 
higher vision, you name it. Many churches come here, and they represent, they come, and then why? Because they want to they experience what's lacking. What do I mean by that sometimes? If not careful, we can treat a move of God like my next high, my next fix, kind of like a junkie. Once it wears off, you go back to your, you know, what do they call that guy? Your dealer, and you say, hit me again. And you get hit, and boom. Sometimes as church people, we go to places only to get a high, but how many know that God doesn't want you to get a high? God wants you to be transformed. The Holy Spirit doesn't give you highs. The Holy Spirit transforms your life for good. That's why we get bored of church, because all you're hearing is words and words and words, and hopefully it's scripture, which is great. But how many know that that scripture comes to life by the Holy Spirit? How did Christ Jesus, how was he raised from the dead? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit raised Jesus from the dead. And he says, and the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is the same spirit that's going to raise you up. So how can we just come and hear the word? You can't just be a word person and have no spirit. And you can't just be all spirit and have no word. There has to be a holy balance of the word and the spirit. And when you combine both, man, it's like supersonic. Dun, 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 supersonic. Dun, dun, dun. Remember that? Supersonic. No, okay, won't go there. Look at this, 1 Corinthians 4. Are you getting something? Okay, good. I want you to understand this because you need to be able to explain this. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 14 and 15, it says this. This is Paul. He says, for if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is what? unfruitful so he's saying hey listen there's times where i'm just like praying in the spirit right you're praying a language your heavenly language we'll get into that and he says but it's very unfruitful because many times i don't understand what i'm saying let me be very clear with you when you pray in the spirit most often you don't understand but god's spirit inside of you understands very well the groanings that your soul is making and the things that you can understand the holy spirit understands very well and so he says I will pray with the Spirit, and I will also pray with understanding. So I pray in English, and I'll pray in the Spirit. You can pray in Indian, and you can pray in the Spirit. You can pray in Japanese, and you can pray in the Spirit. So we need both. It's not, it's not either or. It's both and some more. And he says, and I will sing with the Spirit, and I will also sing with understanding. So have you ever heard our worship team, when they get to that flow part, and they just start singing in the Spirit? That is so beautiful. When you pray in the Spirit, it's not for others. It's for you. When you pray in the Spirit, it edifies you. The Bible says that when you pray in the Spirit, you build yourself up in holy, pure faith and you know what it also does if you read Jude 20 it also says not only do you build yourself up in your holy pure faith but it says it also builds up your love walk and it gives you mercy to display to people who need mercy and compassion when you pray in the spirit it's not just to look spiritually spiritual it's to have a spiritual equipment that helps you live out this life in faith hope and love but you need the holy spirit this is why I have the Holy Spirit. I'm not trying to look more spiritual than anybody else. And so I think that when you see <clears throat> Paul talking about, you know, and being very clear, like when I pray in the Spirit, man, it's unfruitful. But when I pray in my language, it's, it's definitely fruitful. Why? People understand what I'm praying. If I were to just pray up here in the Spirit during a service, you'd be like, what the heck's he doing? What is wrong with him? But when I pray in English, everyone gets blessed. Why? Because we're all on the same page. We're all in one accord. So just imagine if we all prayed in the spirit. Well, I wonder what would happen. So let me give you a thought-provoking thought. Look at this. Is it possible that in this verse that the Holy Spirit has more understanding than we do about our life and our situation? I think so. We pray in the spirit because what you don't understand, the Holy Spirit does. And I know that many of you know this. You know this, but you know what? You're not acquainted with it. It's information, but it hasn't been complete transformation. It hasn't. I know that. I know a lot of spirit-filled people that it's all hype, but no change. No change. The fruit of praying in the spirit is change. It's change. It's transformation. Something, there's something different about you when you're in the spirit. 
the spirit of God begin. He's he's like the, the, the spiritual surgeon. He goes in the deepest places of your life and those places that you can't change. Only the spirit of God can change. We need this back in our life. We need the Holy Spirit. Look at Acts chapter 2 verse 1 quickly. This is where it gets weird. This is when the day of Pentecost had fully come. Ever say the day of Pentecost. This is where Christians took out the word Pentecostal from. Why? Because just because the Holy Spirit came upon us, now you guys are all charismatic Pentecostals. And I was like, no. People think that, that churches that, that, that are charismatic are churches that are loud. Like they shout. That's not charismatic. The Bible says, give God a shout of praise. What did we do? We twisted it. Those are charismatics. Look at them charismatics. No! If you were to win the lottery, you'd be giving God a shout of praise. Huh? When, you're, when your football team win, wins, you give, you give your team a shout of praise. It's amazing how we'll give all kinds of stuff a shout of praise, and we won't call that charisma. We call that passion. But when you give God a shout of praise, man, that's coming from the depths of your heart of your stance and your belief and your position with God Almighty, I give God a shout of praise, not because I look spiritual. I give God a shout of praise because I believe that he's God Almighty. Amen? You give God a shout of praise. Give God a shout of praise. Give it to God. Yeah. All right, you charismatic Pentecostals. No, let me explain this. So when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all, they were all with what? There's that word again. Isn't that what Zephaniah said? Man, the day y'all, when y'all get on one accord, he said, watch out. The impossible is going to happen. Things that looked impossible are going to be possible for you guys. I'm telling you, God needs to bring us back. And so uh, I get it. Uh, it's scary. Pentecostal. Scary. Pentecost. Scary. So I started looking up the word. What does Pentecost even mean? And so when you look at the word Pentecost, because it's New Testament, so that would be Greek, the word Pentecost, pronounced in the Greek, is Pentecoste. Almost sounds Hispanic, but it's not. Pentecoste. <laughs> Pentecoste. Or oh, Italian, Pentecoste. <laughs> ah. And so, and so check this out. So the word, because listen, the, the word, the scriptures are not just written just to be cute. Everything that God puts in his Bible has a, has a meaning. Numbers have meanings in the Bible. Okay, they're very powerful. Numbers are powerful. Okay, I mean, he wrote a whole book called Numbers. So obviously it's important, right? And so, pente means five. Coste means to the power of ten. It ain't, it ain't, this ain't weird. So what is ten times five? So everybody say this, Pentecost means 50. It doesn't mean Pentecostals. It doesn't mean charisma. Stay with me. Pentecoste means 50, okay? Now, where does the number 50 come from? The number 50 comes from the, 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 the plan of God. When, when there was, do you remember when the Passover happened and Jesus was coming to the Passover? Well, from the Passover, it was God's divine design and plan. From the Passover to the day of the resurrection of Jesus was 50 days. That's why he said when Pentecost had fully come, when God's plan was fully completed, then the Spirit of God fell upon them, and they all began to pre or speak in, in different tongues. So that's Pentecost. It's 50. It was God's plan. It was God's divine order. It's what he wanted all his believers to receive. So please step away from this whole charismatic Pentecostal, you know, that's a Holy Ghost church. You know, that also is a label. Yes, we do believe in the Holy Ghost, but we are God's holy people and we are spirit filled. Amen. And when you start doing things like that, people that are uncomfortable with Pentecostals, you say, but you know what? I don't know where you got, where'd you get that one from? When you start asking people questions, why do you think that's Pentecostal? Most people be like, uh, because I heard it. Because my, my church said we're Pentecostal. 
because my church said we're so correct, we're charismatic. No, no, we're not. We're, we're Jesus people. We're saved by grace through faith. We're, we're, we're his holy nation, chosen by God, but we have to get the revelation that God to get when it comes to praying in the spirit. Amen? And so he says, it's fully come now. So if you guys been waiting and you're still waiting for something to happen, guess what? It's already come. Let me explain this. Everybody say tradition. I want to break some religious tradition today, okay? But let me bring it to you practical now as we start closing the service, okay? You ready? Okay, here goes practical. Ready? Blockbuster. Who remembers Blockbuster? Remember Blockbuster? Oh, my God. Are you old enough to remember Blockbuster? Uh, some of you look very young, you know? I remember when my kids saw the VHS. He's like, what? what's that? Oh, Lord, don't even get started. Okay, okay. God, God's been trying to, 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 to confront tradition of men forever. That's why the Pharisees can never come to the, the, the truth and the knowledge of Jesus because it's so hard to break tradition. We have Jewish people that attend our church that don't receive Christ, and I love that. I ain't hating. I'm like, you keep coming here. They love it. You know why? Because they feel God's presence here. And they call, I'm like, you call it Abba Father. Go ahead. You, you practice your Jewish, you know it traditions and that's okay because i'm not asking you to take tradition out i'm asking you to bring jesus in amen so i ain't hating so jewish people do attend elevate church and we're talking they still practice as a matter of fact i'm going to be going to a um on on, on uh, good friday uh, i'm going to be going to a um a seder and and i got invited to go be a part with uh the the uh the rabbi and so I'm excited. I'm like, let's do this thing. Come on, somebody. You know, a little bit of radish in Jesus. It'll be real good. Okay, so, okay, let's get back to the message. So in 2000, look at this. In 2000, Blockbuster Video Entertainment, Inc. was an industry giant with nearly 8,000 stores throughout the U.S. renting out movies and video games. At its peak in 2004, the company had over 9,000 stores and a little bit, a little bit more than 60,000 employees. By contrast, Netflix. Let me see all my Netflix lovers. All right, so, so Netflix came in. <laughs> Netflix was an infant company that was struggling to stay afloat. So many of us right now, you have been struggling in your spiritual walk with God. You have been struggling because other people are doing so much more, and you're wondering, well, why is it that me who has the Spirit of God, why am I not afloat? Stay. It sold DVDs by mail, remember those, to several thousand describers, subscribers, realizing the need to change, realizing the need to what? Realizing the what? Need to change. Look at your neighbor and say, it's time we need to change. I don't care if you pray in the Spirit, even those that are filled with the Holy Spirit, you need to change. You need to change. I need to change. And so realizing they need to change their business model in order to remain viable, they decided to stream their movies to their subscribers instead. Unfortunately, they lacked the funds to develop their idea further. So in 2000, Netflix CEO Reed Hastings, who's still the CEO, he paid a visit to Blockbuster's uh, corporation headquarters in Dallas, Texas. And he offered John Antioco, um, then Blockbuster's had a chance to buy Netflix for $50 million. That was like pocket change. $50 million, that's nothing. Considering Blockbuster's domination of the movie and the game rental business, the CEO found the proposal ludicrous. He and the other Blockbuster executives still did not understand how the market was changing and just how fast the internet and computers were developing. According to Netflix, they were literally laughed out at the meeting in front of all their CEOs. Laughed at. This is a true story. This is written from the story of the CEO of Netflix. When Netflix began to boom in 2007, Blockbuster tried to adapt. But by then, Netflix had already dominated the market. And Blockbuster just couldn't compete on even terms. By 2010, Blockbuster lost $1.1 billion and was, 
and and then their worth was 24 million dollars they asked for 50 million now their net worth was 24 million while netflix was worth 13 billion in 2013 blockbuster closed the last of its 9000 stores as of February 22nd, yesterday, 2019, Netflix has an estimated market cap value of $158.9 billion. Now tell me, who got left behind? If you're not careful, your tradition will leave you left behind. You don't want to change. No, that's how I do church. We do a church just like this. We're, we're contemporary. Who labeled you that? contemporary what the heck is that i don't lift i don't lift my hands well i'm sure you lift the hand with the finger sometimes <laughs> what you mean you don't lift your hand i said i probably seen you in the parking lot here at church leaving we were at a conference i'm not kidding we're leaving the same hotel with my team and everything we're walking out and 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 our team is sitting there and this lady she she cuts out and she she's just going crazy. She looks at me and starts cussing me out. And, and while we're in the van, remember? And just, and I'm like, wouldn't that be funny if this girl is going to the same place we're going to? <laughs> she drove right up to the same conference. I'm like, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> so don't tell me you don't lift your hands. Don't tell me you don't shout a praise. Right? Don't tell me you don't take a knee. No, no, we, we got to get, we got to get this back before we lose out. Man, the Lord will come back and you didn't even know he came back, right? He says, I'll come at a blink of an eye. Before you know it, bam, we're here. But you don't want to be the person to be like, what happened? What, what, what went on? When God is doing, when there is a move of God, man, you better be aware when it's happening because you can take a dip in, right? You can get into that river of God where God wants to stir some new things up in your life. Don't be the person back. Like, nah, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. God's doing something at Elevate Church. He's doing something in your life. He's doing something in my life. Come on. Holy Spirit wants to have an outbreak of miracle signs and wonders back in the church. Holy Spirit wants to reveal some things that you don't know of right now. God wants to show you some future, and God wants to give you destiny and hope and purpose, but that comes only by the Holy Spirit. Man, the Holy Spirit wants to uh, end the struggles that you've been dealing with internally, whether it's a drug addiction, whether it's porn addiction, whether it's anger issues, whether it's a negative addiction. You're just negative about everything. The Holy Spirit wants to break that stuff off your life. But it's the Holy Spirit that will do that for you and I. The Holy Spirit wants to revive and awaken the church again so that it's the church alive and not the church of the dead. There's too many dead churches in America. And then we wonder why in the heck, or I'll say it, why in the hell are we aborting babies? I'll tell you why. Because the church is dead. It's quiet. So why wouldn't they kill babies if the church is dead? Why would there be any life? That's why we got to pray for our president. He just made a stop to that thing. He just put a little, you know why? Because God is waking up America. I don't agree with everything he says, but he's still the president. And nothing's going to change that right now. So I might as well just start praying for him instead of cursing him with my mouth. Amen? The Bible says, honor those who are in authority so that there is peace in your home. When you dishonor authority, God will dishonor you. The Bible says when you open your mouth to talk stupid and curse, the Bible says in Proverbs that you will have a punch in your face. Your lip will be boop. Just when you thought you wanted to, someone tried to attack Elevate Church, I sent one email to this person, and they were just like, ah. And I said, I said, okay, don't worry. I stayed safe. I was very safe. I was kind. I said, here's what's going to happen. I hear what you're saying and what you're doing, but I'm warning you. The only person that's going to get hurt at the end of all this is you. Because you didn't come against me. You just came against God Almighty. And you don't touch God's anointed. I don't care if he's wrong or right. or God says honor authority in order for there to be peace in your home. When you dishonor authority, watch out. It's going to come after you. I'm being, I'm, the scripture, don't get mad at me. Don't get, don't get upset at me now. It's true, right? How would you like your kids to have a little mouth on you? No, you don't like that. You're like, what the? Right? Are, who 
what you just said, boy? Girl, I, I will. My staff, our staff was having an argument in the van. Like, you know, I know it was an argument. They were acting like it was. I'm like, man, if I have to pull this van over, man, I will. <laughs> it was. Right, Elliot? I'm like, man, I will stop. I will pull this van over right now. Don't get me started. I know you're all grown people, but y'all better get your act together. <laughs> okay. All right, you, you have to face some questions. Hurry up, we got to get out of here. Time just flew, huh? Man. We must face these questions. Number one, am I ready to accept this truth? You have to ask yourself. Maybe you don't pray in the spirit. You have to, you have to, you have to ask yourself these three questions. Am I ready to accept this truth? Number two, will I be aware? You have to be aware that God is already doing something new. God is awakening his church, and you don't want to be left behind. Wake up. Wake up, O sleeper, is what the Bible says. The Bible says, let him who slumber, slumber no more. Maybe you've been slumbered. Maybe you've been tired, exhausted. Maybe you feel weak. Maybe you're ready to throw in the towel. You're ready to quit. Maybe you're ready to give up. Maybe you're just so sick and tired of church. You're sick and tired of Christians. You're tired. Let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit will bring refreshing over your soul. The Holy Spirit will give you a new perspective. The Holy Spirit will revive you and enlighten you and give you a new love for people, a compassion for people. Don't wait for all hell to break loose to find mercy. No, make a decision today. I will, I will pray in the Spirit, and I will build myself in most holy faith, but I'll also build myself in most holy love. I'll be quick to forgive. How will I forgive? The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Number three, another question you have to ask yourself is will I embrace the next outpouring of the Holy Spirit when it comes. And let me tell you something. Today, you heard my voice. It's come. It's come. It's come. The Bible says this, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all in one accord in one place. Right now, you and I have a decision. We have a choice. We can be in one accord this morning. And here's what happens when we're in one accord. It says, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven. I need heaven to sound this place again. I need heaven to make a sound in this place again. You need heaven in your life. I need heaven in my life. And as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Are you sitting right now? God wants to fill you. And there there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire, and one set upon each of them, one set a tongue on each and every individual person. Do you realize that God is giving you your own individual language? You have a language. God gave that just for you. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Who gave them utterance? The Spirit. And I hear things like this, well, that's stupid, Pastor, because when I pray in the Spirit, that's me. And my response is very, very intellectually, very well put together. It's, duh. Of course it's you. Of course it's you. You know why? Because everything started with you. When you came to Christ, it started with you saying, Jesus, come into my heart. But it ended with him entering your life. Praying in the Spirit starts with you. You begin to utter a sound. I don't know what your sound sounds like, but it doesn't matter. It starts with me, but it ends with Him. Because as I start praying in the Spirit, at first I'm, I'm still in my, my soul. I'm still in my flesh. But as I just keep praying, I go from the soul to the Spirit. And it's like, whoa, that was electric. And God's saying, that's right, son, I'm real. Don't you forget that, I'm real. Faith without works is what? Dead. So my works is I got to open my mouth. My faith is the Spirit of God's going to fill me. And they all began to pray in other tongues. First Corinthians 14, 4 says, anyone who speaks in a tongue edifies themselves, but the one who prophesies edifies the church. This is, it's for you edifying yourself. 
Let me give you a few benefits of praying in tongues. When you pray in tongues, number one, it empowers you to engage spiritual warfare from the position of victory. There's times where you're praying in your own language and you still don't have the victory. You're still depressed. You're still anxious. You're still angry. You're still mad. You still feel defeated. Well, guess what? When you pray in the spirit, you take a God stand. Now you're no longer praying from Mauricio. You're praying from victory standpoint. And he says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Ephesians 6, 18. Number two, praying in tongues gives you supernatural understanding of God's mysteries. It does. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to God. For no one understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. In other words, the Holy Spirit is your Google. He searches what you don't understand. He knows how to find exactly the issue. You don't know what's going on, boom, he finds it. He's your Google search, amen? Number three, praying in tongues grants you access to other revelatory gifts of the Holy Spirit. What do I mean by that? Well, for one is, is, to give, is given the word of wisdom. What's the word of wisdom? Let me tell you something. But Before I go to any business meeting, before I go to any hospital visit, before I go to anything that's a crisis, I always pray in my native language, and then I pray in the Spirit. Why? I first want to understand what I'm saying to get myself ready, but then I have to pray to the Holy Spirit to give me wisdom when I meet with those people who are in crisis, when I meet with those business people who need some understanding and maybe uh, some counsel, and when I open my mouth, all of a sudden I start with me, and I'm making no sense, but before the meeting is over, the wisdom of heaven has entered my tongue, and now I'm speaking things that are mysteries, and people say, that's what I needed to hear. God wants to give you wisdom from heaven, amen? To another, the word of knowledge through the same spirit. Word of knowledge, what's knowledge? Well, God will give you knowledge of something or someone. Like I've, I operate in those gifts. Word of knowledge, word of wisdom, prophecy. I operate on those. I, 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 I believe in it so much that God gives it to me. And many times God gives me a word of knowledge. Like I'll know something about something and I'll begin to, like I gave them a word of knowledge recently and I said, hey, you know what, I don't know what this means to you, but this is what I feel the Spirit of God wants me to tell you. And I brought them back to my office. I said, you know, have you thought about this word of wisdom, a word of knowledge? Because I feel like maybe there's something I want you to feel like you don't have to fight that anymore. This is what you need to do. And they took the word, they received it, they, they, they applied it, and then they got their fruit right they got their fruit they got their fruit can i share she's pregnant she couldn't have babies now she's pregnant come on give it up for holly and kurt couldn't have babies been trying for years god gave me a word of knowledge dropped it boom there we go by who the holy spirit that's it you're fighting you're trying to figure it out keep 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 struggling pray in the spirit god will give you a word of knowledge huh by the same spirit you know what when you get a word of knowledge you're giving people information right you're giving 411 so they don't have to call 911 right okay next one to another nope 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 sorry, sorry. I was still reading the verse. To another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation. So listen, when the Holy Spirit comes in you, when he's alive in you, man, the Holy Spirit equips you with spiritual gifts. You don't have to be a pastor, an evangelist, a prophet, an apostle in order to operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You just need God's spirit inside of you, and you can't have the discerning of spirits for when it's needed. You can have the, the, the gift of wisdom when it's needed. You may not operate it operate in it every single day but when it's needed it's like a big tool chest whatever is needed for the occasion god will give you the tool for it amen he will but you need the holy spirit you need that next one praying in tongues opens up the bible in a new living way as you read it i promise you man you can be you led or spirit led and god will just boom all of a sudden things are just so clear in the bible you're like whoa like when I was studying for this, I was like, whoa, when I read 7 I'm like, okay. And then I thought, you know, people of uh, the, the Babylonians, I'm like, okay, I see. God, you are, man, you're restoring this language back to us. Amen. Is there another one, number five? Uh, when, when praying in tongues, you are speaking directly to God. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to who? God. You're speaking to God. And so what do I, what do, I do to start speaking in tongues, Pastor? You start speaking syllables. Syllables. Whatever. 
Hyundai, 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 shoulda bought a Honda, but I bought a Hyundai. I don't know. <laughs> Syllables. If you know of a pastor named Frederick Price, that's how he started praying in tongues. He's like, man, I, he's like, it sounded weird, but it's what it's the syllable that came out. And I'm just like, hey, if it works for you, that, that's, that's, what, that's what matters. And so here's what I'm going to do. We got to go already. You got to stand to your feet. If you have never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I'm not calling you up. I know that in the Bible says if you lay hands on people, they receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. I get that. But there's also people that didn't have hands laid on them, and they started speaking by the Spirit. How do I know that? Look at the upper room. Nobody laid hands on them, and the tongues of fire came down on them. At the 8 a.m. service, we had so many people get uh, uh, baptized in the Holy Ghost. I was shocked how many people did not have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It was wild. And you know what? Didn't touch them. I led them in a prayer. We all started praying in the Spirit. Boom, every single one of them praying in the spirit. It was awesome. And what do you do after that? You know what you do? Practice makes perfect. You know what? Remember, the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He's not a possessor. It's been, I've seen it so many times in church. People will start, ah, nah, 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 and it's like, calm down, ah, and they go louder. No, you're drawing attention to you, and you just took off the attention off God. There's a problem. There's order in this house. And I bring order, trust me. It's happened one time where I had to correct someone. While they were in church, they started praying in the spirit loud. It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, is there an interpreter in the house? Because the Bible says the only time you pray out loud like then, the spirit just, one person just out of order. Man, you better pray to God there's an interpreter to tell us what did, what was the spirit saying. And so there's a gift of interpretation where sometimes you pray in the spirit and you can understand what you're praying. That's pretty powerful. Or sometimes someone's praying in the Spirit, and I can translate what the Spirit of God is saying. And then what do you do? Then you have to be, if you're the interpreter, praise Jesus, right? When I, when I go to different countries, I got an interpreter for them to interpret what I'm starting to say in English to them. They interpret it, and everyone understands. That's what happens here. So then the interpreter comes out. Here's what's being said right now. For thus saith the Lord, the Lord is calling you out of darkness into his marvelous light. The Spirit of God will say to you that today he is strengthening you today. He is saying that you are the, 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 the favor of God is upon you. The hand of the Lord is with you. And you will go and you will see the victory of the Lord. And come on, it builds. Amen? It builds. Another reason why people are afraid of the Spirit is because they think that the Spirit exposes. No, the Spirit never exposes. The Spirit convicts. It convicts. And so if you're here and you're saying, Pastor, I want this baptism of the Holy Spirit, I'm going to lead you in a quick prayer. And you're going to pray, and heaven is going to flood your life right now. I promise you. God promises you. It's His Word. So at the count of three, if that's you and you're saying, I want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I want, I want my prayer language. If that's you at the count of three, hand will go straight up, and then we're going to pray. We're going to pray. I'm going to lead you in a prayer. Ready? One, two, three. If that's you, lift your hand high. Lift it high. That's awesome. That's amazing. Hands everywhere. That's awesome. Cool. Awesome. Okay, now li leave them lifted high. Leave them lifted high. Because remember, we're coming into heaven. We're, we're, we're tapping heaven right now. I'm going to lead you in a prayer, and you're going to repeat this prayer. Are you ready? Every single one of you. No shame in this. I'm telling you, your life will change forever. It will. Pray this for me. Say, Jesus, I receive every spiritual gift that comes from above. I receive my heavenly language, my spiritual language. Thank you, Lord, for awakening me this day, for giving me life, new life, a refreshed life. Holy Spirit, I welcome you. Activate every spiritual gift, beginning with my language. In the name of Jesus, I receive it by faith. It's mine. It's mine. In Jesus' name. If today's message impacted you in any way, and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below. And we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.